Hi everyone, this is Lisa from Cookery Nation. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to be having a video that really focuses on beans. Uh, we've noticed that there's a lot of information out on the internet about beans, but it can be very, very confusing. So this video is going to try to clear up some of the confusion and allow everyone to understand the true benefits of cooking with beans. They're economical, they're really nutritious and high in protein, and there's a whole lot you can do with beans at home. So let's go and have a look at the different types of beans and try to clear up some of this confusion. So here we are with our array of beans. One of the first things that you'll notice is that you can buy beans either canned or dried. And it really depends on your convenience level and some of the pros and cons depending on what you're doing. Now these are dried chickpeas and these are as they come out of a can. And what you'll notice is the fundamental difference in size for sure. The chickpeas that come out of the can or are cooked are at between two and three times bigger. Most beans when you cook them will swell to about one and a half times. These are black beans. These are dried black beans and these actually are soaked black beans. They have not been cooked yet but you can see how much they've swollen already just from soaking. Now there, there's some pros and cons for both whether you're dealing with canned or dried. For the canned beans it's pretty inexpensive even with the convenience of them being canned. Um, they're convenient of course because they're canned and they're already cooked. That's the one thing you have to understand is that the beans you find in cans are already cooked. Now some of the cons, some of them have a pretty high sodium content. You can find some that are low sodium but most manufacturers will put a lot of salt in them. The other concern uh, that some people have about canned goods are the BPAs that may be present in the cans. And so some people try really hard to avoid anything canned. Um, as far as the dried goes, well, they're even more in inexpensive than the canned. And that's, that's a huge pro. You do get to control salt and any other additives when you're dealing with dried beans. And of course, you don't have to worry about any BPAs. Um, the big con for a lot of people is they're not necessarily as convenient unless you're really good at planning how you're going to prepare your beans. Now when using dried versus canned beans in a recipe, you're going to come across recipes that will either call specifically for canned or cooked beans. So what do you do if you don't have one of those? So the recipe calls for canned beans, but you only have dried or vice versa. Well, it's actually pretty simple. There's, there's a really good equation that you'll find on the website uh, that you can print off. One can of beans is usually nine ounces or, um, or 15 ounces, but that is the beans and the liquid together. Once you drain the liquid off, you're dealing with about nine ounces or one and a half cups of beans. So let's say you've gone from dried to cooked. You would just measure out one and a half cups of cooked. In order to get uh, one and a half cups of cooked, usually you're soaking and cooking about three quarters of a cup of dried beans. So if you, if you do come across a recipe that calls for cooked beans, usually they'll give you a weight measurement. That makes it really simple because if you only have canned, you just weigh out however many, however much beans you need. Um, another thing that pops up a lot online is a bit of a debate over whether or not to use the liquid you find in canned beans. When you open your canned beans, you will find that it has a whole bunch of liquid in there. Now, some people are of the thought that they want to use that liquid because it's full of nutrients, because it's actually 
the liquid that you was used to cook the beans. Well, this is true. However, if you're dealing with canned beans that use high sodium, then you've also got a lot of sodium in the liquid. And again, the concern over the BPAs. Usually what I do is if I only have canned beans on hand, I will drain and rinse the beans and I will add back liquid in the form of water or stock. And in that way, I'm able to control for sodium and any other additives. If you cook your beans, however, because you can control the sodium and any other additives, you want to make sure that you use that liquid because it really has got a lot of nutrients in it. Now we saw the difference in size of the beans. Now the question is, when you're going to cook your beans, do you soak them or do you not soak them? This, of course, yet another great debate online. Some people say you have to soak them, some people say you don't. I've tried it a couple of different ways and for me, I use my pressure cooker to cook all my beans. So what I found is that I much prefer having soaked my, my beans prior to cooking. And what you can do is you can head over to the website and you can see a full experiment I did on soaking versus, uh, you know, quick soak with salt, without salt. We, we did a whole bunch of variables and you can have a look and see what you think. But it's, it's a great controversy, but I have found for my own preference, I rather enjoy the texture of beans that have been soaked. Now, when you are going to soak your beans, there's also a few things to keep in mind. Convention says you soak them overnight. Where did that convention come from? It came from the idea of trying to make it seem more convenient. So people said, just soak them overnight. So they're doing it while you're sleeping. Well, that's all great until you wake up in the morning and you realize you forgot to soak your beans overnight. And then you just decide you're not going to make your beans. Well, you don't have to do that because most beans take between four and six hours to soak. And that would be for um, your black beans and things like this. Chickpeas take a minimum of eight hours to soak. So if you just get up in the morning and remember, you're still going to have time to do it by supper time. So don't worry. It's usually not that long that they need to soak. Now, when it comes time to cook your dried beans, well, there's a whole number of ways to do this. You can use the stovetop method, the pressure cooker method. You can even do it in the oven and of course in the slow cooker. Um, I prefer to use my pressure cooker, but it's well up to you which method you use. We have an infographic on the website that tells you all the different methods for cooking your beans, including times and water and salt or no salt. So hop over there and have a look at it and find your preferred method. Um, one really important note on kidney beans. You may have come across a recipe for kidney beans that, that says you can cook raw kidney beans in a slow cooker. That actually is not so. If you're dealing with canned kidney beans, that's not a problem because they, again, they're pre-cooked when they come in the can. But if you're dealing with dried kidney beans that have been soaked and you want to add them to a recipe, kidney beans have a toxin in, their, uh, in the bean that actually needs to be deactivated. Otherwise, you can get quite sick. So the only way to deactivate this toxin is if you cook those beans at a full boil for 10 minutes and that will deactivate, deactivate the toxin. Uh, the only exception to this is if you're using the pressure cooker and you don't need to pre-boil the kidney beans when using a pressure cooker because the act of bringing a pressure cooker up to pressure and back down is well more than the 10 minutes of active boiling you need to deactivate this toxin. But make sure if you have a slow cooker recipe, just bring your, your kidney beans up to a full boil for 10 minutes and then proceed with the recipe as written. Now, let's get on to the topic of storing your beans. You'll notice I have jars of beans 
and I have containers of beans. And the way I like to store my beans is, my dried beans, is I will take them out of their packaging and I will put them into airtight containers or jars. And before I put them away, of course, I will take off their label so I know what beans I'm dealing with and any special instructions for them. But if you leave your beans in their bags, what happens is they tend to dry out faster. Now dried beans do have a shelf life of between two and three years. However, if they're in a really dry or warm environment, that shelf life comes down significantly. So I always repackage my beans and I don't top them up. I always use them up before I refill so I know I'm using the oldest beans first. If you do get around to cooking your beans and you just for the life of you cannot get these beans to soften up, that means you're dealing with old beans. You kind of got to chuck them and start over again. When it comes time to storing cooked beans, whether you've cooked them yourself from dried or they're left over from the can, it's uh, really important to understand that they only have a shelf life in the fridge for three to five days. Then they're going to start going. Um, when you're done cooking your beans and you want to store them in the fridge, make sure that you cool them down as quickly as possible. Even if that means putting your cooking pot in a ice bath, just get them cooled down quickly and get them into the fridge right away. When it comes time to freeze your beans, let's say you've decided you want to plan ahead, make a big batch of beans. You portion them out into quantities you normally use. I like to do one cup or one and a half cups, equivalent to basically a can. Make sure that when you freeze them, you use their cooking liquid as well, because these will help. That will help to keep your beans hydrated. The freezer tends to dry things out. You want to make sure you keep them with their liquid and you put them in an airtight freezer safe jar or freezer bags. But air is the enemy here so you do not want them exposed to any air or they'll get freezer burnt and they'll get really mealy and not very nice for texture. But it's really easy to plan ahead and have plenty in the freezer for when you need them. So that is our primer on beans. You can use beans in so many things, whether it's sweet or savory. We have brownie recipes using beans, and of course you've got hummus. You can just throw them in a salad if you like. Beans are a fantastic staple, and you don't have to go and have canned. You can easily do it yourself. You just need to plan a little bit. Head over to the website where we have additional information and an infographic about cooking beans. And if you have any questions, drop us a line. Let us know in the comments or on the website. We'd love to hear your questions. And if it's anything I haven't covered here, I'll be happy to answer if I can. Okay, that's all for now. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.